from the Education Committee. And uh, Mike, before we bring on the superintendent of schools in the state, uh, a quick comment from you regarding the situation at North Middle that we all have learned a lot about over the last uh, 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, we, we heard about it about a, a week ago. We started hearing uh, rumors and uh, the talks about it. And then finally, uh, I believe Ron Stevens was called down to uh, testify before the uh, West Virginia State Board of Education. And they released uh, a report yesterday um, that was pretty... Uh, Dam damning. Damning. And yeah. Now uh, North is under emergency uh, powers under the board of, State Board of Education. So I reached out to Michelle and thought we could chat with her and see uh, what we could find out and kind of go through the timeline of how long this took and why we're in the situation we're in. Michelle Blatt, from the, she is the superintendent of schools in the state of West Virginia. Michelle, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Uh, when did you first find out about the situation at North Middle, Michelle? Well, we've been involved at Martinsburg North Middle since they were identified as one of the comprehensive support and improvement schools in um, the 2022-23 school year. Um, that's a designation that comes from the U.S. Department of Ed that identifies the state's lowest performing schools. And, and then our state um, plan that is approved is, shows how we will support and, and work with those schools for improvements. And so we've been engaged with the school. Um, this will be completing the um, second year. And so we've done, we did some initial things early on. Um, we call it a diagnostic report. And after we do that report, then we assign a coordinator to work with that, with that school and to implement some things that we think would, will help the low performance. And so we've been through this process for a while and we were not seeing any of the changes or any of the things getting better. And there was concerns that um, actually that things were getting worse. And so our Office of School Improvement uh, reached out to our Office of Leadership Development, um, which is all former principals that are in that office, and asked them if they would go do a visit alongside of them to see what they could determine maybe would be the direction that, um, you know, further support that we could provide to Martinsburg North Middle. And so that was the visit that took place on April 17th. Um, but preparing for that visit, we started noticing, um, looking at the data, realized there have been 160 fights just this school year up until that date in April. And then when our team went into the building, um, they just kind of described it as a chaotic environment. It just seemed that there was the major misbehaviors occurring, there was no direction, no intervention by um, the teachers, and uh, profanity, I mean, just, it was basically just kind of an out of control environment. Um, and then talking with teachers and students, and then we also talked with parents about concerns. Um, you know, overall, everyone just felt that there, it, you know, it was definitely a, you know, unhealthy or unsafe building at this time for students and employees to be in, which definitely is going to impact the learning. And we know that, you know, there's not going to be, um, you know, what we want for kids is not going to be happening, at the, you know, at this time without some further support and intervention from the state board. The most recent numbers in the article I'm reading on Metro News and the re statements released show 24% of students at the school proficient in English, 6% proficient in math. This clearly isn't a problem that started in 2024 or 2023, Michelle. Correct, correct. Yes, there's been, um, you know, looking at there has been there have been some ups and downs over the years. Um, <laughs> At Martinsburg North Middle, when you look at achievement, they've you know there was some there's some times that there was some some gains, um, but it's steadily uh, been declining, and the support and things in that building um, were not you know the, none of the issues were being addressed. So it had kind of you know it was it had gotten to the point that um, we felt that with the state's authority in you know in state code that they needed to become we needed to become more involved so that. Um, before any, any additional things happen that, you know, the consequences with these students need to, um, to be taken care of so that they can increase those achievement so, levels. So, Michelle, how many visits did the State Board of Education have with North Middle? And, and did the, have those been well, occurring over the last few months, few couple of years? Yeah, they've been occurring over the past 
um, couple of years. We actually, um, all of our um, principals that are um, in one of these identified schools, they're all required to attend our school leadership conference. And so they have met um, four, four times over the past two years as a, as a larger team um, with the network, and those are like um, three, three-day conferences. Um, we also worked with uh, a leadership team from each of our CSI schools at our Invest Conference uh, the week uh, last in the summer, where we worked on putting plans in place and putting some um, instructional materials and resources that that could be used. Um, we had uh, a mentor, we have mentors assigned to those principals, and so the mentors have met um, virtually monthly. Um, since the designation back in the fall of 23. And um, when, SR, when it comes to communication with the uh, local uh, superintendent and uh, of Berkeley County, it was it, did we know about all of this uh, as far as our local school board? And, and the, the process was coming? Did we do, like, was this a surprise to them yesterday, or do they, do they know about that No, this was they, we've been, um, of course, we do debriefs and, you know, on each of the visits, there's been six in-person visits and in things that have occurred um, as well. And so we will, we work with the contact, you know, a central office contact. And then after this visit in April um, is kind of when I had gotten more involved and started conversations with um, the superintendent and um, the pers secondary director. So Ron Stevens and Holly Kleppner and I have talked a lot over the past, few weeks since the April visit. Hey, Michelle, this is John Gilstrap. <clears throat> Reading the news reports, there are a, a, a lot of disciplinary issues of, of kids in the wrong classrooms and you know, sitting under tables and on tables and it, it just kind of general uh, sort of out of control kids on the disciplinary side. And so that's one thing. But when it comes to the academic performance issues that Rob was just talking about, those are progressive. That have or is this is there a concern about the feeder schools for the kids that are going into middle school to because to have that those low performance uh, performance standards at this level does that indicate that perhaps in their previous schools feeding into that they were not getting the the instruction that they needed? I mean, it it could, but we do normally see across the state we do see a decline when students get into middle school. Um, traditionally the the scores do decline and I know that we've over the years um, done some work with a lot of the elementary schools um, around special education and other things at the request of the um, you know the former superintendent and then we've you know told the superintendent um, Stevens that I mean you know we're available you know if he has concerns with the feeder schools or with any other schools you know we can come in and um, kind of do a diagnostic review of those and help put a plan in place if he feels that, you know, this school is not an outlier. So looking backwards, hindsight being 2020 um, and casting no aspersions, what could have or should have been done earlier to keep this from happening? Well, I think looking back, if a lot of the um, recommendations and supports that had been put in place had been implemented at the school level, um, we should have never gotten to this point. And that dates back to um, when? That dates back to um, fall of 22. Superintendent Blatt, this is Matt Harvey. Um, a couple of questions. So, so these visits, are they surprise visits or announced visits when they come in to review the school? Oh, yeah, no, they're they're announced. They're scheduled with the school and with the county superintendent. And they still these wow. visitors were still able to observe those behaviors that was in the report with an announced yes. visit. Yes. Um, what's the process going forward for North Middle? So we will work with Berkeley County to um, establish an action plan of the steps that must be taken. That will include, um, you know, with their CSI funds that they receive, that will include us to, them to hire an on-site school improvement specialist that's really going to be there um, multiple days a week to make sure that when we get this action plan developed that it's being implemented with fidelity. 
Um, part of that action plan will include how we will professional learnings and things that will take place throughout the summer to make sure that when they get the new leadership um, in that building that they will be involved in the plan and work through it. So when school opens in the fall, we'll um, hopefully see a very different place when we go in to observe. Michelle, how, do, how, how much involvement does the local elected uh, Board of Education have oversight over these kind of issues, if you will? Well, I mean, the, you know, the local, the local board is, you know, they're to hold the super, you know, the superintendent's the employee that works directly for them. And so they're, they're to, should be holding the superintendent responsible and accountable for achievement and schools running in, you know, in an efficient manner. Uh, one of the things we started looking at that's, you know, also actually in state code is the amount of time at board meetings and things that achievement academics and things are addressed and talked about. And how much access do they have to, like, Weavis or the results of these uh, test scores and things like that? So local board members don't actually have access to Weavis. They should be working with their superintendent to review the data and the trends and can make, you know, the request. And it actually, a lot of this information as far as how the achievement levels are in each of the schools should be information that's presented in public at meetings. Um, they do have access, like the rest of you know, the population to the balanced scorecard, um, which is our accountability system that's an online. So everyone can see what the attendance percentages are, what the academic proficiencies levels are. So most of, a lot of the information is public um, and on, you know, on our website, um, but it should be a topic of discussion, you know, monthly as they're having board meetings as to the, how the schools are performing. State Superintendent of Schools Michelle Blatt, our guest here on the program as we discuss the situation at North Middle in uh, Martinsburg. The uh, state, Michelle, has made this move on how many schools uh, uh, right now uh, actively that are under the state's control? Uh, we have declared, since my time um, at the department, we've, I mean, we've declared a state of emergency in, in a, one other school a couple of years ago. Um, Worked with them for the thing. It didn't involve further intervention. Things, you know, things got improved and moved on. So right now, as far as a state of emergency for a particular, the operation of a particular school, Martinsburg North is the only one. And how long does it take typically to work your way? Typically, we've only had this one, one other experience. How long does it take to work your way out of the state's control? Um, you know, hopefully we will get things in place and start working um, with that school next year. And, you know, our hope would be that sometime during the next school year, we would be able to um, remove the state of emergency. One minute left, John, go. A, a phrase that often comes up when we hear complaints about the school system here is lack of transparency. And talking about this particular incident, we knew a week or so ago, it feels like that there was an emergency a state of emergency had been declared, and then there was like radio silence. We heard nothing until the first I heard about it was this news report about the, uh, the situation as bad as it was at, at North Middle School. And then you hear the, the expanse of what the problems were. Clearly, there were a lot of people who knew about this. Uh, is, 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 will there be more communication moving forward about what the fixes are going to be and how the fixes are going to be happening. And, and I'm going to need about a 30 second answer here, Superintendent Blatt. Okay. Yes, we will. Um, the action plan we will take to our state board at their June meeting to, um, to get the approval from that. And so that will be a public document. And then, you know, we'll do quarterly updates or things with our board, but it should be a topic of discussion as well at the local board meetings. Superintendent Michelle Blatt, thank you so much for your time this morning. We greatly appreciate you taking the opportunity to speak with us. Thank you for having me. All right. We take our uh, final break here as we approach uh, 1057. Superintendent of Schools in the state of West Virginia, Michelle Blatt. That was uh, very revealing. This is the second school during her tenure.